everybody. It's Bernadette and I just uh, wanted to spend a little time playing in my journal today and I thought I would bring you along. Um, this is a book that I got at the secondhand store and the reason I chose this book is because it has a very nice sturdy cover and the pages were aged but yet very durable. So um, it is a very strange, strange book. I didn't realize um, how odd it was until I got home. I was just looking for the bones or in other words, for it to have a nice cover and for it to be uh, sturdy and for the pages to be a little aged. So I have already done a couple of pages in this book and uh, today I decided I am going to try something completely new uh, and different for myself. I am going to try to change this guy into a pretty girl. And I'm gonna do that with a lot, a lot of different media. And uh, like I said, I thought I'd bring you along and I thought you might be interested in seeing this. So here we go. So the first step, what I'm gonna do here is use the Jane Davenport Layer Cake paints. And I'm just going to get the first layer of paint on here. And I'm just at this point trying to lightly tint his skin. So I'm going to trace with my paintbrush over his features, leaving the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. And of course, getting rid of that mustache, so that has to go. And I'm also using the paintbrush that came in the Layer Cake set. And I really like it, it's, it's a nice brush. It's perfect for detailed work like this. Now I'm not gonna worry about the shading or anything at this point. I just want to get the base color down and then I will go from there. Now I notice here that as I'm painting, I'm lucky because the, the shadows are already coming through. So I may not have a whole lot of shadow work to do on this page. I'm gonna take it down the neck there, but not to the back of the head, just to the cheek. And I'm sure if this turns out well, um, there's a lot of pages that we can do this on. Probably magazines and um, if it's not newspaper or matte paper, you probably have to do a very light coat of gesso so that the paint would have something to stick to because if it's really glossy, the paint won't stick to it very well. But if this does work, it should open up a whole avenue of ideas for us. So I'm excited. I'd kind of like to be able to fast forward my own video and see how it turns out. <laughs> So I figured out a way where I can mirror my iPhone screen onto my Mac. And uh, that's gonna be very helpful for me because if you've made videos before, you know it's kind of difficult to make sure that you stay in, in, uh, in screen and not go off screen, so. 
I think that mustache might be a little tough to cover up, but we're working on it. I think this is going to work. I really do. Um, let's see. Am I going to, I think I'm going to just paint the bottom of his ear. I'm not quite sure what kind of hairstyle I'm going to give my girl here. And I think I will do his hands as well. He might as well remain in this pose. So we'll just do his hands. Just add a little bit of color to it anyway on both sides. There we go. Now let's see. I'm going to let that dry just for a moment. Oh, it's already dry. Okay, so then I can proceed. I'm going to go over that mustache again. The trick is to hide the mustache but not hide all of his features, so I don't want it to look like just a glob of paint. I want it to look kind of natural. There, I think that mustache is gone now. Okay, so at this point, I am going to add some lavender up here to his hairline, just to add some shading and some colors. I learned, <clears throat> I learned from Jane Davenport that she sees shadows as being lavenders and purples, so. I kind of go with her and I, whenever I do shading, I always do lavender and or purple. So, and I like the way it turns out. <laughs> this is going quite fun here. Now for the eyes. Bring that shading down, go around the nose, the bottom of the nose. And then I'm just going to feather that out. And I quite like his dimple. So I am going to just add a little bit of purple in there. And once again, the paints that I'm using are the Jane Davenport layer cake paint, which this video is not sponsored. I paid for them with my own money. And my opinion of them is that they are fabulous. But I have a whole swatch video and short review video up on my channel if you would like to watch. There. Now I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then I'm gonna decide what I want around him. Let's see here. I think I'm gonna want 
vivid colors just all around her, I should say, <laughs> future her. So I'm going to start out with some yellow and just kind of put some yellow on there. As you can tell, I'm being very careful <laughs> where I put the color. No, I'm not. Just to get a base of color down. I am going to leave the square where he is alone for the moment. Oh, I think some blue might look good right along this edge. Mix it up with that yellow. And chances are I'm probably going to end up collaging over this. But I just kind of want to get an idea of uh, where I want this to go before I start collaging. Because I don't, I don't know what kind of collage paper I'm going to use for this or anything right now. I'm going to move this. This page is staying down quite well, so I don't think I really have to worry. And as you can see, the pages of my book are curling. But don't worry. Um, when I'm done on this side and it's all dry, I could go ahead, turn the page, and lightly spritz the back side of the page, close the book, put something heavy on top of it, and boom, it'll be nice, nice and uh, flattened, flattened at that point. So let's see. Let's go in there with some want to add some depth with some of that goldish color. Make him look like he's a little bit sun-kissed here. And blend those shadows in. Whoops. Right over the eye. There we go. there. Now I'm going to go in with the detailed brush and I think I want his eyes to be bluish green. Let's see. So I'm just gonna lightly put some bluish green paint. Oops, I put a little bit too much water on that. That'll be fine. It'll dry. Now for some lips. I think this is going to really start to transform once I have some pretty lips on there. So let's do that. Front of that, really. I'm not trying to paint his teeth, I'm trying to give him lips here. And once again, I'm just trying to get this base layer down, and then I could always go back in with colored pencils to tidy up as well and to give him more of a feminine shape. Although I think that looks pretty good. Now I just have to do this side here. At this point, he looks kind of clownish, but that's okay. We will fix that. 
I think I'm going to just, instead of doing that peak in the middle of the mouth, I think I'm going to just go ahead and straighten that out. I think I'm liking that better. Yes. Now I'm going to try to minimize his nose just a hair with some lavender. I don't really like the way that looks, so I'm going to just bring that in this side of the nose a little bit, make it look a little bit more delicate and blend that into the cheek. There. See how that kind of got rid of part of his nose there? And it looks more delicate. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to add a little bit of color, brownish color to that dimple because I really want that to stand out. I like dimples. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with some browns and I'm going to go over the eyebrows so that the eyebrows won't look as harsh as they do right now with the black. So just give them a little bit of eyebrow there. Um, I think I'm going to tidy up this side of the nose too. Now that I've done that side, this side looks a little over the top for me. I'm just going to put that more in shadow right there. And the tip. Almost as if, you know, ladies, as um, we're putting on our makeup and we do some contouring with bronzer and highlighter, that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm giving him a makeover, but instead it's with paint. There we go. I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll go over that in uh, flesh tone so it won't be so bright and, and obvious right there. Um, now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry for a couple of seconds, and as I'm letting it dry, let's see, I'm going to choose, I think I want our girl to have purple hair today. I'm feeling purple. So I'm going to start with the hair. Um, I'm going to, first of all, bring that hairline down and make it kind of like a bang, a side bang right there. Cut off this part of the face. Make it look more feminine. Then I'm gonna take this, bring in that forehead on that side. I think that needs to come in still a bit more. Don't want to cover up the dimple, but I do want to, to slenderize his face. And then I'm going to work on that jawline. Just going to add some rough. This may turn out to be really good or really bad. We'll see. But that's what working in a journal, journal is all about, isn't it? Experimenting, having fun, being free to make mistakes. I'm 
shoot. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut part of his dimple off just to get that the right angle. Slenderize his face. Hmm. That nose is sure bothering me. Don't like the nose. Now let's see, I'm gonna go back in with that flesh colored and see if I can't minimize this nose a little bit. And clean up a little bit around the mouth. I don't want her, her mouth to look like a clown. I'm sure we've all seen those people who put their lipstick on. They end up looking like a clown. We don't want that look for this girl. can go ahead and go back in once that's dry and add some detail to the nose so it doesn't look like it's disappeared completely. Now let's do some fun makeup. Let's see, what kind of makeup shall we give her? I'm going to do these blue colors. this out a little bit. I love working with watercolor and um, with these layer cake paints as well. They're so forgiving. As you can tell, I went a little bit crazy over that eyebrow with the blue, but I was able to just go back with some clean water and clean that up a little bit. Now we're not going for a portrait. We're just going for something fun. So we only have to give the impression of eyes, the impression of an eyebrow. Um, and this is where I struggle the most because this is where I got, where I get caught up in that perfectionism mode that I struggle with so much. Okay, so let's go with the hair here. I definitely don't want to go past this. There we go.
that dry for a few seconds. And then go back in and clean that up. And I think what it's missing right now are the eyes. I think once we get those eyes in there, it's gonna bring everything together. Excuse me, I am going to um, dry this off. So excuse the noise for a minute, please. Okay, that's dry. And now what I'm gonna do is I am going to grab my Jane Davenport pastels. I have a squeaky lazy Susan. Okay, let's see here. And I want the contours of her face to be light. So I'm gonna just go over where her cheekbones, where her, the cellos of her cheeks would be. I think I need to bring that chin up. That chin is too long. too pointed and after all that work on the dimples I had to cover cover it up to get the right angle of the chin oh well next time maybe And I think I'm going to, if you notice, let's see, his eyes are in the middle, but they look a little high. So I am going to take this and try to just open the eyes a little bit more so they won't look as squinty. Okay, now for that nose, I'm going to bring the nose up a little bit there. Bring back the shadow right there of the bridge of the nose. Not perfect, but I'm not hating it. That darn nose is giving me problems, but let's see if I shade it a little bit more here on the sides. It might make it look a little more natural.
Okay, that's looking better. Looking better. Now I think I'm gonna get um, some red or pink and just lightly, I had said that I was gonna make it kind of flat, but I think it's a little too flat. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of that Cupid's bow. To try to make her more feminine looking. Pillowy lips. Okay, I'm probably gonna go have to go back and touch all of this up, of course, when I'm done, but Give more of an eyelid. Let's see, I think this cheek needs to come in a bit more. There, this needs to come down. Not solid, but there we go. I think that needs to be rounded out a little bit more. Okay. Putting black pencil almost like um, eyeliner. Maybe going over those brown brows just a little bit. Add some little bit of drama. Okay. That mouth is too big. The mouth is too big. So I'm going to go over that again with some of that original flesh color paint. Try to, there we go. Yeah, it just looked, um, that smile was creepy looking. It, it looked great when, when it was the guy, but as the girl, it just looked, I don't know, clownish, creepyish, not good. Not good at all. Just tone this down a little bit so it's there, but it's not there. Okay. Well, that mouth is drying. I'm going to go ahead and get the 
License to Quill pen by Jane. And I'm going to give him a little bit of eyeliner here. Make his eyes kind of semi-closed. Give him sultry eyes. And lashes. Okay, this should be, yeah, that's pretty dry. So I'm going to go back in there with, uh, let's see here. I'm going to use the color magenta just to kind of close off the mouth right here. There we go. Okay. Now he made back to what I was doing earlier. Bronzing his face up just a bit. Putting those cheekbones in. I don't think my girl's gonna be winning any beauty contest in the near future, but I think it's kind of fun. And I cannot forget to shade under that chin. Give him a little bit more flesh. There we go. Um, the teeth are too big. It's funny when you fix one thing then you can tell that other things need to be adjusted so these teeth are a little too long so I'm going to bring that lip up a little bit more and maybe this part down a hair There, not too bad. With some pink in the tear ducts, like that. And blush. She needs blush. I'm going to be quite liberal with the blush. There we go. I think what she needs too is thicker liner. Her eyes are not quite sultry enough for me. There we go. More dramatic lashes. I want her eyes to be the focal point. So I'm giving her some really dramatic lashes.
Now I think the next step is to add the whites of the eyes. I normally leave this to the very last, but I think in this case, I need to, to do it now so I can see if the eyes need to be changed the shape or if that's good. And for this, I'm using a white Posca pen. Nothing like a white Posca pen, in my opinion. I'm just going to white my teeth just a little bit. And let's see here. I'm going to go in with the Jane Davenport Pacific Ocean Sparkle Pen. Her eyes need a little bit of sparkle. I don't know, guys. This is uh, this is giving me vibes of uh, someone famous in Hollywood. I can't. I can kind of put my finger on it, but I dare not say the name. Because I don't think maybe that person would be so happy. If they happen to catch my video, which I doubt they would, but <laughs> stranger things have happened. Maybe you can write down in the comment section below who you think it's, who you think she's kind of looking like a little, a little bit, just a little bit. And I don't know what it is, the half closed eyes maybe. I can't. Oh, this color is coming, okay. It's not coming out of the tip. It's coming out of the other part of the, which is fine. I don't need it to be very detailed right now. I'm gonna just put it on there and drag it. Come on, come on, pen. Shoot, I wish this was working better for me. Let's see. Um, oh well, I can go in and just give her highlights, maybe. Like I said, my girl may not win a beauty contest, but I'm quite pleased with the way she turned out, honestly. And it was tons of fun to do.
I swear I do have clean hands sometimes. <laughs> but the ink just gets everywhere somehow. Never fails. I'm liking that. I just want to make this eye a little bit rounder. Come on, don't leak. Don't do anything that you're not supposed to do. Okay, there we go. Now, what kind of outfit shall we give her? Looks like she's kind of having a laid back, lazy day. So let's give her, <sighs> let's see. Pink outfit. Pink and purple go pretty together. So let's just give her a pinkish sweater. And I'm just going to like leave here. You can kind of see the folds in the fabric. Um, I'm going to leave that sheer, that paint sheer enough so that you can see those details. I don't feel like uh, redrawing the clothes. That part I think would be way too challenging. And could I have started off with this page and um, just jessoed over the gentleman that was on here and started painting a new girl. Of course I could have done that, but this little exercise was quite challenging, but like I've said, quite fun at the same time. And I'm glad that I did it. And I think I will probably find myself looking for more pictures in this book to alter. So I gave her a little bit of a v-neck sweater. And I think I will since this color right here is so rich. Uh, maybe I'll take the shoulder in all the way over here actually and make that all sweater look like a bulky sweater yeah I like that and then I have to go in darker on this side I think I just figured out, yep, yeah, who uh, who I am seeing here. Like I said, it's a famous, um, let me narrow it down, a famous singer. That's who I'm reminded of when I look at this. Please, if it reminds you of somebody, leave it in the comment sections below. I'm kind of curious if I am just seeing it or if other people can see it as well. There we go. Add some more purple to that hair. Want it to be nice and flowy. There we go. And I think I'm going to call her pretty much good, except for I'm going to add a little bit, a bit a little bit more pink blush. I think she just needs some more pink blush. helps bring those cheekbones out oh I think that's what gives me the vibe are those high cheekbones that I gave her yeah that has to be it let's see what else does she need maybe a little bit of a highlight here on the cheeks a 
highlight here and what dare I give her a tiny highlight up the nose. Yeah, I actually like that. And right here on the bottom of the chin. There we go. Now to figure out how I'm going to decorate the rest of the page. Excuse me for a moment. I am going to grab some collage sheets here. Not collage sheets, napkins. And I think I found exactly the napkins that I want to use. I think I like the colors. Let's see how they, how this would look. Yeah, I'm really liking that a lot. Granted, I know, I'm aware that these are Easter napkins with Easter eggs on them, but when I'm done with it, you won't be able to tell that they're Easter eggs and the colors will just look really nice. So um, when you collage with napkins, they always come with backing paper, at least one backing paper. And if they're higher quality napkins, a lot of times they'll have multiple backing layers. So you just take this off. Somewhat carefully. And then if you want a good tip on what to do with the backing sheets, please watch my other video. It's called From Trash to Your Stash. And in there, I do a mini tutorial on what to do with these backing sheets because they come in very handy. So I always save mine. Okay, so now that, that our girl is done, step two is going to be to collage around her. And I'm gonna use my trusty um, hair dye brush to do that. I, I got that hair brush uh, or dye brush, I should say, at Sally's. And I think it was like really, really inexpensive, under 50 cents, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to randomly tear some of these eggs off in no particular order and stick them on the book and this is Vicki Booten matte acrylic gel um any type of matte medium will work it doesn't have to be this brand I got this um at Tuesday morning a couple of months ago and I really like it it's one of my favorite favorites to use. And I don't glob it on. I don't like the look of pages um where the matte medium is globbed on unless I want texture. You know, I'm using texture paste paste or whatever. Let's see. There we go. That fits perfect. Squirt some more of it down there. And it doesn't matter if we get some that crosses over there, that's fine.
really want to get some of that green on there. So I'm going to put some of the green pattern on. And whatever's hanging over, I will go ahead and just trim off when, when this is all dry. I really like the way these colors that I chose look with this particular collage. I think I'm going to put another couple of little small pieces here. I want the top of this to have pattern to it. Likewise, the other side as well. And as you can see, I'm just layering the napkins on and I'm not being precious about it. I just basically want the color. I think that part is done and in the water that brush goes I'm going to fold this back up I could use the rest of this at a later time I save all my little bits and if you excuse me I am going to just add some heat to this As I was drawing that, I was looking at the our girl, and um, I decided that she needs some separation or some nice thick black lines in her hair, just to help give her hair more shape.
All right, like that. And I also noticed that she needs just a wee bit more blue eyeshadow on this eye. There we go, to kind of open that up. And I forgot to put the highlight in. So now that this is dry, let's go ahead and just give a quick dot. There you go. That's all done. This is still a little damp. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably pause this video, give it a chance to dry, and then I will bring you back with me. I'm back. Um, I decided to add some gesso just in spots on this. Move my pencils out of the way here. See what I mean about this brush? It is so great. I mean, I just used it for the matte medium, but it's still nice and flexible. I did uh, wash it off right away, but it's still a really good brush for stuff that you don't want to ruin your good brushes with. I realized um, after I started drying this that I can still see that these are Easter eggs and I did not want that. That would not make sense in the collage to have random Easter eggs. So I'm just going to put enough gesso on to mask the fact that they are Easter eggs. <laughs> but yet have enough of the color showing through. Now this is uh, Jane Davenport Gesso. Um, unfortunately, they're not selling these anymore in store. And I, I know Jane said that I think she's almost out of hers, her um, stash as well at JDHQ. But any brand of Gesso will work. I know Jane recommends the Liquitex gesso. So when I run out of this, that's what I'm going to start using. OK, 
okay, let me clean some of this up and dry this just for a little bit. Now I think that this needs some kind of quote or sticker or something. So I'm going to look in the Dilutions sticker book and darn it, doesn't look like I have, oh, here's some whatever don't want to go just be don't forget time for a drink note to self eat the cake um let's see oh no way keep it real how about never yeah i can totally Imagine this girl saying, how about never? She looks a little sassy, so let's go ahead and use that. Let's see, I want to place it somewhere where it's going to be obvious. Oh, that's a good place right there. How about never? <laughs> this lady has quite the sass going on. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to take a stencil. Mm. Let's see, I'm going to use the Dilution stencil. And I think I'm going to do, uh, maybe I'll do these sugar lumps. And then I will go ahead and do the flowers after that. I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's see. I'm going to use Dilutions paint. This one's almost empty, so I'm going to go ahead and use the one that's already open. I have all my basket full of little round sponges that I reuse. So as long as it's kind of in the same color family, I'll go ahead and reuse one of the sponges. It's not a big deal. And I just need a tiny, tiny bit of paint. Work it through in a circle. And then I'm gonna just randomly Add this pattern to it. There we go. Done with that color. And I think flowers would look really good maybe in P 
pink. So I never waste this paint. I always put it on another sheet of paper. Let's see, I'm probably gonna just rub it out on this. Make random designs and the random pages actually turn out to be some of the most beautiful pages that I have in my journal, or at least they are in, in my, my very humble opinion. Okay, so now that the paint is off there, I need to find the pink sponge. And just barely, when you're using these paints, you just barely need some, and then you just work it in. Don't put too much. Diane Reevely, who is the creator of these dilution paints, says that that's where people make the mistake. They use entirely too, too, too much paint. So I'm gonna just lightly put some flowers over here, mostly in the spots where I didn't put that purple paint. Especially around the edge here. You want it to have just a touch of color. Tie it all in. And there we go. Um, I think I just need to do a little bit of touch up work and then I'm going to call this good. Let me just close this paint so it doesn't dry out on me. go around with a brush pen and just kind of go around that frame that was originally on there. And uh, I think that's going to be good for now. Now I don't forget that I have to go back and I have to trim uh, around the pages. Maybe I'll just do that right now so you can have a better idea of how this looks when it's completed. There we go. And when this dries really well, um, before I end this video, I will insert a picture of what it looks like when it's all completed. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, trace the flower sticker in black and maybe go in and do a couple of doodles around the corner and, and uh, then she's gonna be all done. So thank you for taking the time to watch this. And at the end of this video, I will insert the picture of what it looks like at the very end. Thank you. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Please hit the like button. And if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. Thank you and have a great day.